I'm going to be hearing a lot about this. And people, this well, was this was sludge. Tell them to fucking take it up with me. I don't give a fuck. I would like to say the same, but it seems like I'm worried about people calling me a bad friend for just not editing a this and putting friend. it out. They're going to be mad at me, but I'm just. He's just going to be. Uh, well, how about this? If he's mad, at, if you're mad at him, I think I'm mad at you because you're being a bad friend to me by acting weird and shady, acting like you didn't do some shit that you did do, and you know you did. I've been friends with him for like. And well, I just don't want to be like the truth out, is the you know. truth. Well, no one is cares. But should I tell him? Should I give him a little warning? This is coming. It feels kind of weird to yeah, not maybe tell him. Yeah, your friend. Yeah, I'd be like, if, she totally spilled your beans. If you want to, um, I have. But a, tell you better tell you also should. You better let him know. I can pull up a fucking security and I don't play. So. Yeah, security's gonna have a turn with you too. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. <laughs> If he, gives, that? if he gets prior warning, I can't imagine he's going to love that this is airing. But hey, he has, can suck, we need ratings. He can suck fun. my dick. Ooh, Actually, yeah. no, he can't. Has he already? Oh, oh my god! Already, but, <laughs> but everybody, this has been um, Thanks, this, guys. this has been an episode of Sludge Lords, and I think it's been great. How your feet so look, Flacco? Disgusting. So I'm going to tell this tale from the beginning. So I'm at the AVN Awards, and I'm approached by a a, a, a trans performer. Because she's friends with my friend Nicolette Shea, who I've interviewed previously, porn star, and uh, you know she's got a little mob of trans performers around her, and we have a little exchange on camera, and it's kind of funny, whatever. And uh, we reacted to it, or we talked about it on Sludge Lords, and there was an Instagram reel posted as a result, and uh, the trans performer in particular, Gracie Jane, she came on. Uh, in the comment section and started commenting and she didn't take like full offense to it but she wasn't 100 percent happy with i guess the way that we were joking around or whatever and she said and so me and danny right away were like oh this this could be really good content we should have her on the podcast right so how are you joking around <clears throat> joking around with her yeah like what was she upset about well she said that she wanted to s my d and i was basically I, I can't even remember what we said on Sledge Lords that she like took offense to or whatever. But it was just like, you know, whatever. We're like, let's have her on the podcast. Now, she dropped a comment on that Instagram thing that said, ask house phone about me. Ha, 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 ha. Mm -hmm. Or some shit like that. And you'll remember, Lush, that I sent it to the group chat. Yep. And it was just like, what the fuck is this? And so house phone just denied it right away. He's just like, what the hell? I, he, he acknowledged that he knew this person but said... No, nothing like that. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. He was like, we made a song together, but that's it. Right. Or yeah, she was in the studio or whatever. And uh, okay, so I, I take his word for it. Fine. And then we have them on the podcast, me, Danny Mullen. And Danny Mullen doesn't really even know about this. Doesn't even know about that comment that she left on the reel, I don't think. And um, we're having the conversation. And it becomes obvious pretty quickly that she's intent on continuing to talk about this house phone thing on the podcast now this was kind of weird for me and i even let her know during the podcast like you know we're gonna have to edit this stuff out right like like we're this is just weird like i, I can't expose my fucking co-host on the podcast or whatever if he doesn't want this information out there and um you got to put yourself in the shoes of a trans person for a second and think about how they take that because from their perspective they are a woman and nobody should be ashamed of uh, spending time with them or whatever. And so she like pretty much immediately really takes offense to that and is really not stoked on the fact that I told her that we were going to edit it out, right? So we have a whole little huddle afterwards because there were a few of the different like editors and employees in the room at the time. So this is already going to be like a badly kept secret most likely because a bunch of different No Jumper employees are in there. And so we talk about it afterwards and me and house phone talk about it. We get on the phone and I do want to also clarify because apparently it was said that people were laughing in the background of my conversation with him. A hundred percent not true. I was in my office with the door closed. There might have been people making noise outside the office because I do kind of remember this being like a loud, hectic day where there was a lot of stuff going on. But the idea that anybody was like laughing or making a joke about this or whatever is not the case. That was that's totally not true. Anyway, I talked to House Phone and I realized pretty quickly that he's really not feeling this coming out. And at this point, I'm kind of starting to sense like, oh, there must be some truth to this or whatever, because otherwise, why would he 
be so concerned about it. So pretty quickly, I talk to the editing team and I have all the screenshots and can prove this and everything. And I basically just tell them like, yo, this is, uh, you know, this, this can't happen. I know it seemed kind of funny when we were talking about it and everything, but we got to edit it all out. And I, I, I feel like I made myself clear too that. I didn't want to just like bleep the name because there would be too many like identifying characteristics when I'm talking about how this is somebody that I've known for such a long time and yada, yada, it would just be like, I didn't want to create this like guessing game of who we were talking about or anything like that. So I said, let's just chop out the whole part where he got discussed. And that honestly, if it was like an hour and a half long podcast, that might have been like 10 different moments in the podcast. Mikey, can you confirm that? That there yeah. was like a lot of because you were taking notes of each different time that he got mentioned during it because you anticipated yeah. that we were going to edit this so out, right? There was a the, there was a moment that happened about 10 minutes in where basically me, uh, Adam, and the other person that's on the podcast like were looked at each other and kind of like gave a visual cue about like, let's make sure to know all these things. Uh, so I took note of every time that uh, his name was mentioned. At some point, you know, Adam changes the subject and the subject is gone. Uh, Lush can attest to this. I saw the whole unedited yeah. clip. So oh, the, ho, ho, ho. you are really tapped in, my friend. You're, you're getting all the, the extras. So basically, there, there was proof that one, Adam didn't know that this was going to happen, that uh, whoever was going to say his name. Also, every time his name was taken out, like it was take, it, the name was said throughout the podcast, like at random times, whatever. Adam did try to steer the convo away from it, like mm -hmm. in his typical fashion, but the Gracie and Danny kept kind of. Because from Danny's perspective too, like he doesn't even know that me and House Phone right. already had a conversation about this. He doesn't know how sensitive this is gonna be. Also, he's white. He doesn't understand the fact that this is probably gonna like be more of a thing for House Phone than it would be if, if fucking Danny Bang, Gracie Jane, everybody would get over it in like 12 hours because yeah. nobody would be all that surprised, right? He probably did. Yeah. <sighs> I'm not he's, counting. he's a comedian, you know what I mean? It's like he doesn't understand those barriers. Where like with his friends, all jokes go basically. Yeah. Where and he had no context leading up to this because he was hearing this for the first time. And to him, House Phone's just this this mm -hmm. fucking guy he knows, and yeah. he he's not thinking that we're gonna edit it out until I start saying we're gonna edit this out. At which point she gets fucking super mad too. So in my head, also, and I'm gonna this. I think I said this in one of the screenshots, but I'm like knowing this can't be a simple situation because if we don't put the podcast out, she's going to get so fucking mad that she yeah. came and did this podcast without it being released that I was like certain that she was going to expose it because she, she had already exposed it on the fucking reel, even though like at that time, nobody really noticed. I didn't see any Reddit posts about it. It wasn't really a thing. She, yeah, I was there. Like I sit in on Sledge Lord, so I can tell you like from the beginning, she came in with this kind of energy of like, Basically trying to stand up to Adam or show Adam up or something. Yeah, <laughs> which <clears throat> I understand your perspective where you're saying that. <clears throat> um, a girl and you can't be putting weird trans memes on your fucking story right That's now. Not a trans be meme. I, you, but I saw <laughs> it, and I'm just saying, with the current context, everybody's gonna think that you're poking the fucking bear. Yeah. Um, I I just saw <laughs> you ain't hard food post that uh, apparently um obvious or what's it called uh men can have periods now and I was like oh it was a shocker to me I've been the lot for you know I know I'm years. just saying like given the current you know climate um okay maybe well, <laughs> that's maybe. a you ain't hard food <laughs> you ain't hard food is hilarious <laughs> no everybody so, posted that though, but like yesterday. you were saying it's like um from her perspective it's like I guess uh if you were you know in her shoes and you hooked up with some dude you, you probably feel some type of way that he doesn't want to take accountability that you d he did something with you you know if, if something may have happened but also I feel like it is really weird and like uh shows your character to be like trying to out people you know for like for no fucking reason well, for well, clouds like what is it for let's remove the fact that she's trans for a second let's mm -hmm. say it's um a, a born woman mm -hmm. the, <laughs> even, even if that were the case why are you going out of your way like that's still not cool exactly exactly to, to, like this dude has a girlfriend you know what i mean Imagine like a girl did that got on a podcast was like oh by the way i did this with lush a long time ago you're yeah, like dude who are you it's like why are you even talking about right like and, that's and, lame regardless and yeah. house one is a host on the channel but to, to put in perspective we had a girl on the patreon the other day who said i want to do you want me to tell a bunch of stories about drake and i was like no that's that's fine yeah. like we've done enough of that we already had <laughs> selena powell we already had the goat we're not really like 
in the business mm-hmm. of exposing people for views at this point. We yeah. always turn it down. Maybe a couple of exceptions. There might be some that might make that a slightly hypocritical situation uh, statement. But regardless, we had the conversation. I tell the whole editing team, and, and right now I would like to go to the first uh, screenshot here. Okay, here, here's the conversation. This is pretty soon after we filmed the Sledgewatch episode. Adam says, yeah, can we try to edit it? LOL, he's not stoked. Michael says, got it, I'll work on that. And then this is much later. This is after it gets released. So fast forward into the future. I say, people commenting, acting like House Phone got exposed at the end of the pod. Michael said, there's a part where Danny says his name while Gracie is talking. And you could sort of hear Danny say it. And he sends me the timestamp. Let's go to the next one, Josh. Okay, and this one, this, okay, so this is before it was released. I tell them, or I tell Bossa in this case, I feel like we got to cut like all of the shit about phone like, it's really funny, but I feel like we've got to just chop anything where she's talking about whatever. Bossa says, yeah, for sure. Agreed. I say, or, or, and then he says, we censored the audio every time his name came up, but it's still got the stories, which is kind of untasteful yeah. because I feel like people are going to figure it out eventually. I say, yeah, I just want to cut all of it. Okay. So, so this is my motivation for people who are putting out the narrative that I wanted to expose House Phone for views. A... I never would have thought that this was the kind of thing that would get a lot of views in the first place. I don't feel like it's getting a lot of views right now. It's the kind of thing that basically the only people who care about it are like super hardcore no jumper fans that are going to watch anything that we fucking do anyway, right? Like the 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 blue face is an example of something that we might do for views, you know, get this fucking crazy ass chick on the podcast. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. But when you're looking at this, you see that my intention mm-hmm. was to cut all of it. So what were you going to say, Michael? Yeah, so around this same time, uh, if you want to go to my email, I emailed Bossa personally on my own uh, saying that I I watched over the clip. Uh, I think it's the other one. Yeah, yeah, it's this one right here. So I hit up Bossa. This is one one eleven a.m. the night after, like the same, the night after the Sledge Lords thing. I hit him up. I tell him, yo, man, the interview's about an hour, 30 minutes long. I can cut it down to 113, removing everything that has to do with House Phone. And, like, I don't really want to say what, what was in there, but, you know, there's something about, like, us going to a studio together, whatever. Right. All that stuff was gone uh, because I really didn't want to put anything about House Phone out there. Uh, House Phone's, like, one of the closest homies I got here, one of the first people, like, to even, like, really, really talk to me like that. So, like, I was going out of my way to, pr- like, try my best to get all this shit out. The next day, Adam hits me up telling me the same thing, like basically saying this to me, like take everything out. I'm like, yeah, I got it. We talk about shortening the clip, blah, blah, blah. And I go through the entire thing like two times, one time the original time, the second time when I do my second edit. And I do this thing. If you have Premiere, you know, you can like outlay the text to, mm-hmm. to hear, like to see like what they're saying, whatever. Like the same thing as on those Instagram videos. The same shit. That exact same. I do that to find every instance of House Phone's name, cut it all out, whatever. The only re- and like this is my mistake. And like, you know, I mean, I know I'm going to get a lot of shit online and whatever for fucking up. Uh, but my mistake was there is a moment where she is talking and. Danny says the name under his breath where like it, it's barely caught. It didn't get caught on the text thing. I didn't catch it. Uh, so that was basically the fuck up there. It was like all this mistake. And, and the thing about yeah. that too is that it's like if my intention was to expose House Phone or put something out there about him, why like trust me i i was there for the whole conversation if i wanted to leave in anything if i thought that there was anything that was just so funny or such good content that we just had to leave it in trust me it was not that moment where danny like said fucking house phone's name under his breath there were other parts of it that would if i was going to have left something in that would have maybe you know put him being exposed in jeopardy or whatever it would have been other parts trust Mm -hmm. me like this was not an intentional thing and if i wanted to expose him this is not how i would have done it you know like i it was just the fact that with so many podcasts coming out i don't have time to watch every single thing before it comes out and unfortunately this one just kind of slipped through the cracks and uh i think that a lot of people um might have thought that because he said like we need the views house phone he said it like that so that's maybe also sparked but did further speculation she said that no no danny said that house danny he, said that to like, house phone yeah 
Dead. Really? No, yeah. no. I think he said it on the pod, didn't he? Yes. Oh, that's he what said I'm it saying. on the pod. He said right. it. He's like, yeah. he's like, well, like we need, we need these views. views. House phone. Okay, yeah, yeah. But, and the, but but what? what that's I, the part. That's the part that, that got. Kept okay. In. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that like, so I think it's important, Mikey, for you to point out that the reason why it it didn't catch the house phone is because she was talking yeah, at the yeah. same time. She was talking. So, it, so the content ID thing. It only picked up whatever the hell like what she was saying. Yeah. So. I like went back on the file and like went to that part and yeah the the text the text to speech thing was covered by whatever she was saying at the time. Uh, it didn't pick up what Danny was saying because like I'm sure if you've seen the clip you can tell he's like he like whispers it like or like says it under his breath like like this like mm -hmm. you know. So I mean I it sucks because since it happened I've just been like upset one upset about the like house phone one upset about like fucking up here like in my job you know this is my job like i'm supposed to be fixing this shit and you know like all these narratives about fucking adam knowing or planning this is, is just like i don't know ridiculous appreciate that but right yeah. here let's let's just pull up this danny moan conversation that i had on tuesday too just because i want to really you know just put into context of like wh what the internal conversations about this were like so Danny says, shit is unbelievable. I still want to know who fucked who and if there was a condom. Obviously, Danny just still, you know, having fun with this because he doesn't really take it super serious. I say, house phone seemed more nervous than angry, you know, but I can't expose someone who's been doing pods with me for seven years. Thing is, she's going to be so offended by us editing it. I feel like she's still going to air him out anyway. He says, do you think bleeping his name is possible or are we just going to full cut? And yeah, man, whatever, the other rest of us unrelated, but... You know, just to put into context, like, this is the conversation I was having with Danny. So now you can see how I was talking about it with the editors and with the co-host. This is all that really, I guess, matters to me is just, like, making it clear that I had no intention of giving House Phone a headache. I'm fully cognizant of the fact that he's been, you know, I don't want to act like his whole life has just been hell or anything, but obviously dealing with the mom shit and, like, he's living on his own for the first time and he's got health shit and everything i mean he's the last person on the crew uh, on the staff that i would want to fucking give a hard time right now so i just you know there's a certain part of me that just doesn't even feel like fucking responding to this until like tuesday or whatever but i just wanted to actually put all this stuff out there because it's just you know the idea that i like have this fucking vendetta against house phone or that i wanted to expose him for views is just it's not true what was the like original reason she came on for the, to the podcast to like debate about trans stuff? No, whatever? it wasn't supposed to be a debate. It was just supposed to be like a funny conversation because we had had this uh, weird TikTok exchange okay. or whatever. It wasn't really supposed to be yeah that serious. And I also want to say, I don't give a like I don't give a fuck what anyone in this office does sexually at all. Anyone could do anything that they fucking want and it's not my business and it's not something I'm trying to expose what anyone's into. And then also on top of that, I'm the only person that also has to deal with the fact that Gracie now hates me. And believe me, Gracie is like, uh, you know, a relevant performer or whatever. So she's got a good amount of followers, people pay attention to her or whatever. She is now beyond furious with me about the way that all this played out. So, uh, you know, really, I'm the one who has, like, pretty much everybody upset with me, and I haven't benefited from it in any way. It's not like this is, like, something where, oh, like, look at how Adam's just raking in money off the situation. No, it's just pure annoyance and house phone having to deal with a bunch of bullshit and me having to read a million fucking comments. I can't I, believe she's upset. I had nothing to gain yeah. from this. Yeah. Well, two things. Um do you feel like in retrospect you could have possibly been like hey let's just reshoot this later and then chalk that episode i think if it had been edited properly then nobody would have ever known that there was anything in there about him you know it still could have been like over an hour's worth of content with all that stuff removed obviously to be honest that was probably the funniest and most noteworthy stuff of course but the rest of the conversation was still fucking fine and uh you know, honestly, the episode that's up right now, they could edit like, or they did edit it, but I mean, that's exactly what it would have been like. And so, I don't know. I mean, it, it part of me is like, oh, maybe I should have actually rewatched the whole thing just to make a hundred percent sure because it was that serious. Yeah. But I don't know. And this is where I was kind of saying this yesterday. I didn't really know all the behind the scenes of Danny's perspective on things of what he really knew about, and that's why during disconnected yesterday, I was thinking like at the whole 
you know, the end of this whole situation, I feel like the two people you could find kind of find at fault is number one, her for even trying to do this to, you know, to someone. And then I thought it was kind of like, from my perspective, Danny bringing it up. But then as you're explaining, like he didn't really understand all that stuff. And he was trying, you know, he's a comedian at the end of the day. And, so. and what reason does Danny have to like want to fuck with house phone? Like yeah. He doesn't have like Danny. I could tell tries to be like pretty respectful of everybody at no jubber because he realizes that he's the only like white non hip hop yeah. guy here or whatever. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I mean the idea that Danny wants to like get at house phone or whatever is just, no. Yeah. I think he was just tone deaf more than anything, you know. Um Yeah. But he definitely didn't realize it was going to be this much of a thing. You well, know. If you look at his content with him and his friends, like they don't have no boundaries like that. They I watched Danny Mullins fucking film her get his asshole fingered by Kazumi in front of me on the No Jumper couch. Mm -hmm. Really on this couch. <laughs> oh my oh, god. Great. Yeah. <laughs> and uh you know, just to put it into perspective, he didn't really seem to think that was too big a deal, so, you know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Um, so I think a lot of people would want to know, like, how are you in house phone now? Where are y'all at? Was there apologies? Are you guys chill? What's the deal? I mean, yeah, we had a conversation last night that he kind of like, you know, acknowledged that on disconnected when he, he kind of like pushed that narrative of that, like we were, did this on purpose to try to get him, you know, to make content or get yeah. more views or whatever. And he kind of like apologized for that. So, I mean, whatever, but also like. Given that, like, like I am the fucking Elon Musk of No Jumper. Like, anything that comes out, I do have to take, you know, some element of the blame. And I, you know, the same way that Elon, every single thing that gets posted on Twitter, he eventually somehow gets, you know, faulted for it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to let him fucking say something on Disconnected without me having to, like, you know, get mad at him or whatever just because I know that this was probably a fucking huge, unnecessary pain in the ass for him. And he did a, a really good job, uh, yeah. you know, addressing the situation. Like, I was really... Uh, I thought so, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. It's, if, um, it's, like, one thing if House Phone was super transphobic and homophobic and was making a lot of just, like remarks like that and exactly. trying to portray a certain image but mm -hmm. he's like the nicest dude at no jumper m like least problematic super open-minded and chill so for someone to go out of their way regardless if it's a trans person a gay person or a straight woman whatever anyone trying to get in him like that yeah is super out of pocket and doesn't really make sense like what i don't i'm not exactly sure what Gracie, <laughs> like, why did she think that that was going to be a cool idea? Exactly, especially yeah. like, like if if that she, well, yeah, chasing. right, it's cloud chasing. But it, like Adam said, she's super popular already. So like, why? What is? What do you gain from doing this? But the thing you is, like, the thing is, is that the trans women think that there is nothing to be ashamed of, and that there's no no reason to hide this at all. And they get so offended by the idea that somebody would want to keep this shit a secret. And that's kind of like why uh, like other people, famous people in LA I can think of who've been fucking uh, exposed or, or who have done this, like <clears throat> the trans people are coming out of the fucking woodwork to talk about yeah. it because they just love to fucking acknowledge it because they hate the fact that, and I can kind of attest to this, that dudes publicly will always say that they would never fuck a trans woman and then in reality i think like a pretty you know not not a majority or anything but a, a, a nice chunk of men in reality are open to that and they hate that they hate that there's this thing involving them that they're this secret fetish and i think that's what she was trying to do is like oh i'm gonna fucking expose this on here but i think she had the opposite effect now guys yeah. you know are more likely to if you know, if, they're, if they're in a room with a trans person now they're going to be even more scared like oh now everyone's really going to think we're doing something we're not just friends or acquaintances now it's like now with people like her trying to throw other people under the bus like that it's like it's, it, like lush was saying if house one was out here saying all these transphobic things saying it's immoral he doesn't agree with the blah blah and then he did that Okay, she kind of has a right to be like, hey, it's kind of uh, not right for you to be like putting me and my, you know, like my, uh, people in my community down while also taking advantage of it. This is the He's man who wrote was, the bro that. top freestyle. Right. <laughs> He's and, never and, done and that. I'm just thing. saying. Yeah. yeah. And, and she's like, I get it. She's like six foot six. She's like two inches shy of Scottie Pippen out here. Like she's, <laughs> she's a fucking starting small forward. You're next. Like, she's going to expose you. No, next. like <laughs> I'm not even dissing. Like the thing is, it, like I said earlier, it's got nothing to do with being trans just i wouldn't want anyone period exactly speaking on my dick like that so i understand like this new um 
the trend in the with in the trans community of wanting to normalize that, which I totally understand. Like mm-hmm. people shouldn't be ashamed or forced to be ashamed about that, and it shouldn't be like some like taboo fetish. But just speaking on someone's dick like that, especially when they're in a relationship, that's out of pocket. Period. Exactly. Yeah, I don't even like when like even when there isn't this trans element in it in general. I just think it's kind of whack. Like there's girls that are known enough that if I were to fucking say on camera, oh yeah, I fucked her back in the day, you guys would all be like, oh, that's fucking crazy. Let's all talk about it. That girl has this many followers now or whatever. And I just think it's like kind of in bad taste. Like we do yeah. it in the porn world, obviously, because it's a business and it's just- And it's on blast. We yeah. See it. But like, I mean, I could think of all kinds of shit from my dating life back in the day that I could put out there and, and probably almost anybody could, right? You got yeah. you got some bodies that you could like name it Absolutely. and everybody would be like, Oh, that's crazy. Lush fucked her. Well, like when I said the whole um, the Eskimo brothers with Drake, if I said who it was, <laughs> right. people, you know what I mean? Like, but th- that's scandalous to do. You don't want to embarrass people like that, put them on blast. Respect but. people's privacy. You know yeah. What I mean? So in case, just in case it wasn't clear, house phone, I apologize for any fucking is. grief that this caused you for the fact that any of this even became a thing in general. I'm sorry. It's just, you know. Yeah. I don't even know what else to and say. I, me and House Phone spoke yesterday too after disconnected. I literally waited till the end yeah, of disconnected me, to facilitate. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and uh, we're cool. Like he, he, he understands my perspective. Like you know, I, I did my best to try and protect him, uh, but you know, I fucked up. And uh, I think one of the the saddest things about this whole situation to me is Phone was alluding to the fact that he's not sure he wants to. He was like, I don't really know what my future on no jumper is mm-hmm. and like to me like i really hope that's not the case and i hope that things get worked out because phone is you know as important as anybody to this platform and is a huge reason why it is what it is today so mm-hmm. i really hope that gets fixed so now that we have uh disproven this adam 22 intentionally tried to expose house phone narrative you can all every single person who said it in the reddit or on social media you can all post retractions and i will <laughs> I, I will just like not even acknowledge them or upvote them i'll just let you do that um what was the other thing i've been hold my breath say? was there one more thing that i was gonna grab a bottle of water Fuck. Want one? funky okay. fred sit down in that chair you really still don't have socks on Oh, you got you got Birkenstocks? You're trying to be like the boss man, huh? Yo, listen, man. You, you like them? And I'm a bootlicker, right? That's what they said. A you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You're brave with, with feet looking yeah. like that to wear Birkenstocks, my boy. Listen, man. I just be, be, be you know, I just be, be a cooling man, you feel me? You letting the dogs breathe today, huh? Yeah, man, you know. So I didn't see it. Can I just ask, did, did House Phone go on ACK last night? Yeah. He, he did. Yes. For how right. long? Uh, so like we were both there for about like an hour or two. You were both right? on at the same time. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, right. But like, essentially, like what me and him both said was, like, obviously, like Adam has acknowledged, right? Feel me, right? Sorry, right? But like, we don't think that Adam like did this intentionally or went into this interview thinking that like this girl was gonna do this, right? So mm. I feel like that was like like that was like the like the most important question. And then, like, once, like, we said, you feel me? And obviously, you know, like, the chat of people who was there was saying, nah, what you mean? Right? But, um, like, to put it into perspective, I interviewed a rapper. I wish I could just say the name so you guys could know what I'm talking about, but unfortunately, we're on camera. But I interviewed a rapper, and then I interviewed this other rapper, and one of the rappers called this other rapper a snitch. Yeah. And from my perspective, that wasn't public, or that hasn't really been said publicly, you know? But it was said in, like, a really serious fashion, as in, like, no. This person did this. They, you know, yada yada. And we cut that out, and that's that's like me doing that. And and nobody told me to do that. We just did that because it made me feel uncomfortable, and I felt like that was something that people were really gonna get hurt over, yeah. you know. And that's for like a random fucking person that I barely know. Uh, yeah. So like the idea that I wouldn't have gone out of my way. I mean, you can see the screenshots that we went out of our way to get the shit deleted, you know. Man, right, but like. I do want to make sure. Bro. Listen, man, like that chick though who came, bro, like she was a weirdo. I think she was mentally ill. <laughs> I'm chalking right? that episode, right? period. If I if I'm you, I'm nah, like, fuck that shit nah, coming bro, out, period. Bro, like, fam, like she was obviously <sighs> it, 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 again, man. Like this thing of like, yo, you know, I'm ashamed of no, or like, yo, like I don't want for them them to 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 like not claim it. Nah, listen, people from from that community, they crave the adulation from straight men. 
that's what makes makes their cold demon blood kind of like <laughs> oh like, wow like, like, like a shine right you feel me? demon Jesus blood Christ. oh my god right <laughs> and she was obsessed with making sure yo listen like and their value is completely dependent off of how attractive they are to straight men right so she's coming on was simply to say oh look you know like this like straight guy here you know fucks with me enough to right like bro it was completely bullshit she's she's mentally ill she's a fucking psycho right and, and, and again let's be real bro like by next week she's gonna be back in obscurity nobody will give a fuck about her right she's a fucking nobody she's she's a fucking peon right and and bro i can't stand hoes like that because right? again bro straight or not straight or not that was the wackest shit to do she's a piece of shit and it's fuck her you know that's pretty scandalous i can't lie that was a little over the top, but I, I do agree that that in cold general, demon cold demon blood. <laughs> I'm so, yo, but what, what was possessing her to do that? Like, what what did she get out of that? People from that community have this obsession with adulation from straight men, right? So her saying that again, like, and their worth from their perspective is determined by how, like, how, like, like how freaking attractive they are to straight men, right? They love for the public to know, yo, straight men find me attractive, right? So her going into that was two things. Probably her her, her porn career is on the nosedive. And two, right? <laughs> and two, she feels like, yo, listen, man. Like, it's all good. She just got drafted by the Indiana Pacers. Yeah, Don't bro. You feel me? It's bullshit. <laughs> yo, listen up, bro. Like, I, listen, I've warned everybody, you feel me, right, around me when it comes to doing content with, you know, with, you know, with, that ilk, just be really careful, dog, right? Because, again, there's a lot of mental illnesses that exist in that ilk, you know? Well, I don't know about all that, but Wait, I so will you're say... that trans is a mental illness? Okay, let's just, let's just no, keep her. this moving She's, along. Okay, you know, yes, just trying to clarify. It. That, in general, is just, like, I think he is right about the fact that clearly her intention was to be like, oh, Adam, you might not want to fuck me, but, aha, uh -huh, your friend did, you mm, know? Yep. It's like... I think that's probably fair to say that that was their motivation to be like, you know, oh, you might think that I'm I'm a trans woman, but I'm a real woman too. I mean, whatever, fuck it. And, but she's gonna be so mad all over again once that trans panel comes out because, uh, oh, well, shit. I won't spoil it for anyone. But Blair White did her thing. Is, was she on Blair the White? trans panel? Yes, her she, and she brought another girl with her too. And man, Blair White's good at her job. I'm not gonna lie, it was a wild thing. We're gonna get that out asap. She got washed. No comment. Oh, thank God. But it was, it was, it was, it was good. It was a good conversation. This is well, what yo, I get I, for dipping my toe in the trans pool, man. Yo, I mean, <laughs> this is absolutely, this is absolutely what you get. Just because, like, that is kind of like one of the most incendiary spaces on the internet. Well, like speaking of you know dipping in the trans pool, it's like uh, for other men out there that might be you know a little bit more experimental or they want to try out different things in their life and they expect to have some privacy. Mm -hmm. Now with girls like that, you know that oh great, you know it's like I'm gonna be experimental one day and I'm just gonna be outed by the fucking next person I sleep with. It's like that's. That's a terrible thing to go under. You know what I mean? It's like a sh shady, Honestly, yo, shitty man, thing to do. Like, I just feel like if you're dealing with that community, bro, like you should know. You feel me, right? Like an exposure is gonna happen. You feel me? So like, you know, so you know, just you know, you I, know, I think you know, there's the risk. I think there needs to be a precedent set in general across the board. And I think we've all learned a lot this month by what, as far as like protecting cast members trying to expose right. cast members and it's happened on all angles i think there needs to be a precedent set that we need to protect our own and anybody that's trying to make anyone over here look bad should not get a platform i was very happy the other day because an interview happened with a rapper <clears throat> and that rapper used the platform to basically say hey i don't fuck with this other host one of the other hosts nobody even knows that this happened besides like the group chat and i hit up josh to be like yo we got to take out that part where so-and-so said this about one of the hosts. And Josh was like, yeah, we already did that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that, that's that's yep. nice that the, the precedent's cool. already been set enough that everybody knows that. Also, too, Adam, right? Hey, hey, so, like, also, too, like, do you, like, here, so, like, do you feel, like, it's unfair, like, for example, because you're, like, a boss and a friend. Do you feel, like, people, like, hold you to, like, an unfair standard to, like, and uphold the friend obligation first over being... A boss? It's a good question. Well, in this case, it's like the friend thing to me clearly was more important. That it just like wasn't going to violate house vote in this way or whatever. But I mean, it could have been anything. You know, it's like yeah. if, if someone went on the pod and said, 
you know, like just you using the platform in general to fucking like just attack the host just seems like a bad precedent. And I, I, I will, I don't want to bring up old shit, mm -hmm. but you know, a lot of people made the same accusation when I told Lush to try to get to the bottom of whether Flacco was from fucking Idaho or whatever. <laughs> Philly or North Dakota, yeah. Wyoming. Because, it, because think about what happened. The way that this happened was like, I'm not gonna lie, Gina and Suspect were like uh, very aggressive in the context of that episode, and like, I ended up basically getting blamed for everything that happened just because I kind of gave the instructions of saying like, oh, you guys should address these rumors there in the Reddit or whatever. Yeah, I it's mean, like, you got blamed, but I also <laughs> you definitely got blamed got too, a lot of right? Blame yeah, as well. But I mean, like, besides me just saying like, hey, you guys should talk about this shit, it wasn't exactly my call. Is my mic sound crazy or is it just in my headphones? It, sounds, it sounds good crazy? to me. It sounds fine to okay. me. Okay, maybe it's just the headphones then. Sounds like Bing Crosby. But <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's it's kind of like from the fans or whatever. I, it's it's kind of like an easy way to take the blame off of anyone in particular and just put it on me, the person that happens to be like a lot more high profile and kind of has this like evil fucking image that they like to put up, post up. So I mean, to be honest, at this point, like there's such an attempt to like create crazy narratives in our fan community or whatever that like i just don't even take it serious at this point and yeah. it just doesn't really like i just see it for what it is where it's like no matter what happens on the show there's a significant percentage of the fan base that's going to try to create the most negative possible interpretation of what just happened and we as the hosts have to actually like communicate with each other enough to not fall for that stuff when we see it in the comments or wherever so. Yeah, I feel like the, the the one narrative out there was like, yeah, that you kind of intentionally wanted this to happen, whereas we've seen through the text and everything you said so far, it seems like you've been trying to go out of your way to make sure it doesn't come out. You know what I mean? So that whole narrative is like for sure squashed. Um, but people just be saying shit. Yeah. If, if, if House Phone did an interview like that with somebody and they were trying to get at you sideways, we wouldn't let that shit come out regardless. You feel me? So well, I think it's a boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost feel like yeah, I would. You Depending would? on what it is. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I'm, if, if you interview someone and they have something negative to say about me, which by the way, this happens all the time. The fucking, yeah. you know, AD and t Rell have interviewed plenty of people that sit there and fucking say negative things about me. Yeah. And I find out about it and I'm just like, hmm, yeah, put it out. Like if I feel like responding, I'll respond. And if I don't feel like responding, I won't respond. But this has happened a whole bunch of times. Fucking uh, Rucci was like, you know, landed on thick talking about me or whatever. It's a Gina and Duno at one point. <laughs> I didn't even think to ask for it to be deleted. Now, obviously, this is a much more serious situation, but yeah, yeah. Well, um, at as the long end as of the we're day, family, you know, house phone's the homie, and house phone is the homie. Shout out. A phone. few moments later. What, what if she walked up to you and she was like, "How the fuck could you do that to house phone?" <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, I've been watching No Jumper since 2017. She's like, you just lost a subscriber, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And fuck Danny Mullen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah fuck that cracker, Danny Mullen. <laughs> oh, shit. <Yeah. laughs> um...